All right. So when doing a when doing a law of signs before you guys and you know um, men ask question like what if you have this and this you know can you still use law of signs? So my best recommendation when you guys are given homework problems that are in this format is to create a triangle. So I'm just going to draw a triangle. It doesn't need to be anything special, all right? But just remember, it's going to be an oblique triangle. And I don't really know what exactly the triangle looks like. Um, if you guys remember, I graphed, or I showed you two triangles, right? I graphed that kind of skinny one, and then I graphed one that looks like this, right? In reality, your oblique triangle can look like one of those two types of triangles. I just always like to graph a triangle looking like this. But once we, once we, put, in the, um, once we put in the angles, we might realize that it should look like the other triangle. All right. Anyway, so we know A is 36 degrees. And we have B, which is 48 degrees. And then we know A is 8. So in using the law of sines, what we have to do is we have to have a proportion. Now, if you guys remember, when we were doing the law of sines, we had um, A over sine of A, B over sine of B, C over sine of C. So we at least have to have a ratio of a side length and an angle. Do we have a ratio of any side length and its angle? Yeah, yeah. yeah we have A and so we have sine, or I'm sorry, we have A over sine of A. Now, can we equate that to any other ratio? Well, the only other information we're given is the angle B, right? So B over sine of B. So that's why I said you cannot do angle side angle or side angle side. Because for those types of triangles, you don't have a ratio. right? To solve these, you have to have a ratio equal to another ratio. Because when you have a ratio equal to another ratio, you have a proportion. And we can solve a proportion. Now, we don't have anything for C, do we? We don't need to do anything with C. We only need a ratio equal to another ratio. You don't need all three of them. We're just doing two at a time. So now you just plug in your information. 8 over the sine of 36 equals b over the sine of 48. Now, again, as I mentioned, I'm going to be solving these kind of a little bit quickly. I'm just going to solve for b. You could do cross multiplication. You could multiply by sine of 48 on both sides. Either way, you get b equals the sine of 48 degrees all over I'm sorry, sine of 48 times 8 all over the sine of 36. Okay. As I mentioned, guys, I'm just not going to be showing my steps because I want to get through these problems. So I don't want to be spending time multiplying both sides. Hopefully, you guys understand how I got to that. Yes. Solve for b. Basically, cross multiplied and solve for b. So therefore, I just go on my calculator, make sure your mode is in degrees. And then you just do 8 times the sine of 48 and then divide that by the sine of 36. And I get 10.114. Um, for these problems, we're going to round to the 10th. Or if the problem is rounded to a different decimal, see here, these are rounded to the whole number, correct? So unless it tells you otherwise, always round it to the significant digit of the problem. Since there's no decimals here, we're going to round to the nearest whole number unless it tells you otherwise. So this one is going to be approximate b is approximate 10. Okay, So again, just make sure you're careful with the problems. They might have you rounding to different digits. However, if they don't use any um, decimals, or actually, let me just look at this problem. What do they even say? Um, they said to round to, I always like to round to the 10th. So let's just approximate it to 10.1. I have a question. Yep. So when the whole interior of a Right. Well, that's what we're going to do. Okay. So now, exactly what James was getting into, which you'll do for it doesn't matter which case. Well, all right, so we found B, 10.1, right? Great, congratulations. We still need to figure out something with C. So again, we have to know our, the sum of interior measures of a triangle. We know that all the angles in a triangle add up to 360 degrees. I'm sorry, 180. So you could say that the angle C is equal to 180 minus 36 minus 48. Would you guys agree with me? So what was it? 96. 
96. So we could say C equals 96 degrees. So yes, is my triangle perfectly written for this problem? No, that should be like an obtuse triangle, right? It should probably look something like this, yeah. right? It should look something more like that. But it's OK if you guys don't initially. I would just say I, I still, under recommendation, I always like to sketch a triangle, just at least so you have something visual. At least for me, that's how it best works. Well, now I need to figure out, again, how to solve for my side C. Well, now I can use, again, a ratio. I, I always like to go back and use my original measurements rather than using B, because I solve for B. Um, just in case I did something wrong, I'm going to go back and use my measurements for A. So I'll do A over sine of A. And if A over sine of A is equal to B over sine of B, which is equal to C over sine of C, therefore A over sine of A is also equal to C over sine of C, which I believe is the transitive property in algebra. So therefore, this is going to be C over sine of C, but sine of 96 degrees. And A is actually 36. So therefore, C is equal to 8 times the sine of 96 degrees all over the sine of 36 degrees. How do you recommend solving this? Cross multiplying or multiplying by? I mean, all I know is I just need to multiply by sine of 96 off the denominator. So I just multiply by sine of 96 on both sides. I didn't have to cross multiply. You could, but I mean. So you do sine of 96 on? On both sides. Yeah, you get C equals. Right. So you didn't even have to multiply. I mean, you can cross multiply. It's just extra work, though. So 8 times um, sine of 96, and then divided by sine of 36 equals 13.5, which we're reducing. And the last step we want to do, guys, is just make sure that the side lengths look right. That This looks like, I mean, forget about what the picture looks like. But does the side length compared to the angles look about right? Should the largest angle have the largest side length across from it? Yeah. Right? OK. Everything else looks pretty good, though, right? Yes? Does it matter what kind of triangle we draw? No, I always just draw this no matter what. You guys obviously, hopefully, realize that the triangle would, probably, would look like this rather than like that, right? I just always, that's just me. I just always draw this triangle first. What your sketch looks like really doesn't matter. It really just depends on what measurements for the, for the angles you get.